so this was warned as special select board meeting with Hardwick Electric Department. I'm just going to call us to order. Is that right with you if I drive? All right. So, I guess. so, um, no, I just say select board chair. So I'm going to call the meeting to order. It is not five. It's like five eleven. Mm -hmm. um, first thing is set adjust agenda, which we may want to do. The only thing really that's on here is a recap from our last meeting, in, which was in May. Um, do we want to add some other points of discussion? I think we want to talk about how we work together and communication. Okay. Right. Between and and mm -hmm. how to avoid some of the pitfalls that we yeah. had. Um, it came up at our last select like, board meeting about minutes online. I don't know if we could talk about the website and how to support HED and getting those minutes to be available. That's kind of in communication, but yeah, that, that minutes are part of it. But minutes, in my mind, are are, are after the fact. Sure. <laughs> Come. Just thinking more before the fact. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, Could we also provide an update about our new energy coordinator? Yes. It'd be good to know what the energy committee is supposed to be doing. Yeah, you wouldn't and, and what what its <laughs> function is, how it relates to the electric department, if at all. Um, okay. We'll just we'll pick up that. Uh, um, atrocious. What else do people have? Are you interested in any project updates or, yeah, or uh, of those? Is that redundant to what we've already covered it? At the well, well, is, can't that be part of reports? No. I mean, we do have like yeah, like 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 reports. Oh. Do we have new business and old business? I mean, like, yeah. Do you want to do it in there? Sure. I mean, does right. it have to be a specific? No, it's fine. I don't know. Yep, so we'll do project updates in there. Anything else? Uh, old business and new business can cover an awful lot of stuff if we pick up things that <laughs> as we go along. But, um, all right, so Motion to approve the adjusted agenda. Wait, look, can I read it back? Mm, sure. <laughs> All right. So, so we've got we still got the recap or follow up on our last meeting, which was in May, and then we've got um, uh, talking about communication and working together. Uh, we've got an item about uh, website minutes agenda posted on websites, and. Uh, three, uh, or I guess four, is the new energy coordinator and committee and what they're up to. All good? Aye. All, <laughs> all in favor <laughs> of, a, of changing the agenda as uh, stated, who say aye? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, so there's the agenda. Um, all right, so next is communication from the audience. O'Rise has departed. That's a quick one. So that's a quick one. So recap on our last meeting. Does anybody have things from our last meeting? Just carry on. <laughs> I, I, it was I a long time ago. It <laughs> was a long time ago. We decided <laughs> that we would meet again. We did, which was good. <laughs> that's right. All right, moving along. Communication uh, and working together. So lines of communication. Do you want to lead this off, Lynn? I, I, I think, and maybe this is sort of brings up some of the things. For example, the whole thing with the trails mm -hmm. and H11 and the conservation easement. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that the problem arose out of miscommunication. Uh, you know, I don't think any of the commissioners knew that there even was um, a, an MOU related to Hardwick Trails. Mm. Um, yeah, it could be, because there could have been complete turnover on the board uh, since that was dis the MOU was discussed. Yeah, well, the MOU 
is in its second 10 years. Right. And I know so it's been discussed since then, but it may not have been with any current board members. That's entirely possible. Yeah. So, and I, I for one, don't know what else may be out there in terms of agreements, policies, whatever. But, but nevertheless, with or without the MOU, had there been better communication, um, and, and maybe that would come from periodic reporting or looking at who's using what areas, um, I think that, I hope that, that the electric department would have known that there were trails in the area that were going to be impinged upon if this easement was granted. And, and we could have been involved in the process earlier because it was a process that was largely being driven by Encore right. and, and A&R. And now we're in a situation where we're trying to clean it up uh, so that there, yeah. if, even if there isn't access in the winter to the, to the particular, two particular trails, that we don't have a 25 year period when there can be no expansion even in the summertime. Right. So let's, um, I, I think for that particular issue, probably the best course would be um, for the Hardwick Trails Committee to do periodic updates to the Hardwick Electric Board, also to the Hazen Board, and to this board. I periodically do um, minor updates to the Select Board just because I'm here, but we have actually haven't been to the Hazen Board in a number of years either. And years are too long, probably. So it probably ought to be at least annual. Yeah. Yeah, um, the, the MOU actually, if, and I apologize, I read it last month, so I'm going on my recollection of last month, that the, the MOU did envision uh, regular communication, and a specifically a communication before there was any new development, new construction. So which makes sense. sense. Which makes a lot of sense. You know, yeah. it, it anticipates for all the stakeholders. So. Yeah. I, I, I would suggest, Lynn, uh, that that's what we kind of go back to the MOU and say, let's, let's make sure we have a no less than annual or when there's a, some expansion or new initiative. Yeah. And, the, and, and my suggestion, I'm just speaking of Harvard Electric, kind of like the idea of all the interested parties. Yeah. 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 And because this time if we ran into a problem, the next time it might be the school or it might be. Right. The, so, and which is why, I mean, I did come to a part of electric board to offer an update on the trails, but it was a little late. Yeah. I mean, the, as for, I was, for that purpose, I, I mean, the trails there where Pinch had been there quite a long time, but, yeah. Yeah, no, I think the, um, the process started, and Mike, you, you probably know when, when the whole issue started <coughs> percolating at A&R, but that's when everybody should have been brought on board, because that would have been the real opportunity to intervene with A&R and say, wait a second, there needs that this needs to be done in a way that, that addresses everybody's interests and not just A and R's interests. Right. And so there at least a, some sort of annual update would have been really helpful, like with absent any major trail development at all, just to have somebody coming in as a reminder that the trails are still out there yeah. would have been good. You know, I mean as far as the trails are concerned, I think at least this board has a heightened sensitivity. Um, to if, if if anybody is looking at, at, at doing anything associated with, with the land, we're, we're well on notice. Mm -hmm. But there, there may be other things. And I think it's just, when, when things come up, I, I think we need to be thinking more broadly. But I think also the select board or other entities in the town, you know, whether it's, whether it's David or whether it's the, the, you know, members of the select board, need to be bringing things to us um, early in the process because that's when they're easiest to deal with. Yeah, yeah. Um, along the lines of communication and along the lines of that conservation easement, 
do you feel that's the kind of thing that probably should have come to the select board as well as to the Heart of the Electric Board of Commissioners? Are we talking property now? <laughs> well, I mean, you're talking about granting an easement, right? Yeah, yeah. well, I think I, I think the whole property issue, and I, I don't think that's, that this is a good forum to get into it in detail. Okay. And I, and I think it's probably something that we should get legal advice on. Um, but it's, it's complicated. Mm -hmm. it, my, I can tell you what my understanding is based on a <coughs> letter that's, what, from 1989? So it's a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, is that title, the title on the, you know, the name on the deed is the village of Hardwick. Mm -hmm. Functionally, it's the electric department because it's electric property from the standpoint of rate base. It's used for electric service. And as a result, the property can't be sold. Nothing can be done unless the electric department consents to it and the PUC approves of it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a really peculiar. But you'd also need the town to consent, too. The town, I think, needs to consent as well, yeah. And, and, I, and I think that that probably has not been done in every case. Um, and that's, again, this is something that we're just yeah. finding out about. And um, it's, it's, it's a weird, we're, we are a weird beast because we are on a certain level, we're regulated, but we're independent from a governance standpoint from the town, but we are part of the town. Mm -hmm. I, sp I suppose in a way it's similar to the school district, except that the school district isn't even as much part of the town. It's really its own district. It's not part of yeah. the town from, it's not part of the town from a charter standpoint, whereas we are. Okay. Where does the more. enterprise fund term come in? Yeah, that's, right. what's, thing. that's what it is. Right. That's what the electric department is. Well, that's not what the town show. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't use that term in the charter. No, no. it's interesting. I, it I was digging through documents, trying to follow up with you, Eric, in the last day or two, and uh, right after the village and the town joined in '88 or whatever, all the stuff from the general manager, or not all the stuff, a couple things I found from the general manager at HD was being signed off as. Um, Hardwick Electric, uh, town of Hardwick doing business as the Hardwick Electric Department. Hmm. I thought that was pretty interesting, but I think yeah. that's closer to accurate as to what this relationship is. Like a sort of a... We're all the yeah. same corporation. Yeah. Can I have another communication recommendation? Yes. Yeah. Give time to that. I also, so we also have this opportunity of at our meetings when we have either a commissioner or you, Mike, coming to make reports about the department. Personally, I feel like it's great to hear about projects, but I think that's also an opportunity to have a conversation too. So if there's either a question that might that the commissioners might have, um, or if there's something, I think this happened at two meetings ago when it came, the pilot came up because the, um, the assessors brought, brought in and for changed information. We had a conversation with Mike and said, oh, we should bring this back to the commissioners because this is new for us. And then I, I just think it's an opportunity, that's an opportunity where we're almost twice a month, if not monthly, communicating with each other. Monthly, yeah. To, um, to maybe get a little bit deeper than just reports on projects and ask questions like, Oh, this came up at our meeting, or, or we will be talking at our commissioners' meeting about this project. We really would, and this happens sometimes. But I do think it's an opportunity face to face that's already built in that we can maybe capitalize on a little bit. The more. difficulty with that is that the commissioners who aren't here aren't part of that discussion, and no one commissioner speaks for the board. Well, I just mean I don't I don't mean that you have to have a conversation about property. That's your misunderstanding. No, no, no. I'm not talking about property. I'm talking about if there's an issue. I think it's important for everybody to hear what it is, or if there's a concern, and not to be getting it through a filter of one person, um, or vice versa for the select board to be getting one commissioner's 
view of something rather than what the board's view on it is. Um, so in that, I mean, to the extent, if, if, it, if there's a message that needs to be relayed, I mean, frankly, we can use email too, which is to send something and, sure. and let us know. I, and I, I think Eric has, you've been doing that more, which is great. I tried. No, and it's a little hit or miss. I, um, I just mean something general, like at our next commissioner's meeting, we are going to be discussing the H11 project and we welcome everybody to come to the meeting. Or in our next meeting, we might be talking about, and we could do the same thing too, mm -hmm. and say that there's something yeah. coming up in our sure. agenda that we really recommend Mike come to because maybe it's a conversation about EV stations in town or whatever it is. I just think that's a, we could certainly send emails. I'm just trying to point out that that's a point where we're already we have been communicating. <laughs> we have been inviting members of the select board to come to our meetings for years. That's an open invitation, and no one ever comes. Eric has. That's, you I'm sorry, sorry Eric, Eric, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. He was all sweaty, <laughs> showed up in his t-shirt. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> 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 so, it's just going to take donuts, coffee. But that's the thing people, you know, and, and, and but I do, th I do think that if there is a specific, because this happens the same with the select board meetings. It's like, come to a select board meeting. It's like, oh, okay. But if we were, if you were to say, there's, there's something that we really feel like I agree with you. I want to come to a meeting. I usually have meetings that are happening at the same time. But um, but I would be more inclined to come to a meeting if I knew there was going to be a conversation about something that, because I don't know, I don't necessarily know what you're going to be talking about, yeah. and that's my fault. But I'm just saying, I'm maybe, just saying that like in-person point yeah. could be an opportunity for us maybe to. Maybe the thing to do is, is, to, is, is if we can get our agenda out earlier Publishing and agenda. send it to all of you. Just or have sure. it on the website. Um, and, you know, yeah. and, and have it on the website. website and, 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 but, but even, you know, it's no big deal to send out an, an, sure. that would be great. an email. Um, that way you see what's on the agenda. Yep. Which, again, doesn't mean that the agenda doesn't change, but right. it's, well, it's, right. it's a stab at it. Yeah. Go, go, going back to eliminating uh, the miscommunication or lack of communication or something, which is, you know, no one did intentionally. And rather than making it an ad hoc solution, like uh, have it, you know, anytime there's a decision make decision making process, uh, some something's going to be decided on. The interest parties, interested parties, are informed, just like a butters are informed when something's going to be done. You know, like uh, has something to do with zoning, or somebody's going to be building. Or, so the contract comes up like that. The uh, it's examined for interested parties, and then. Uh, uh, notification is given, and the other things that you're talking about are, are more community, are more discussion, general discussion. But just trying to avoid that the ad hoc, you know, like how to standardize the communication to avoid the kind of thing that that we're, we're you know you're talking about with H11. I, I disagree with you, Vince. I think it's very difficult to know who the interested parties may be. I think if we get things up on the website and we and we get the agenda <coughs> onto the board, uh, to the select board. Um, that, that's 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 a start. But hey, yeah, it, it, yeah, you're not you're not going to cover everything, but at least due diligence has been done as far as you know. Okay, well, there's going to be this project. There are going to be things happening. At least a, a good faith attempt can be made to have the interested parties informed. You know, not on an ad. You know, like I said, not on an ad hoc basis, because then you end up having this kind of 10-year interval, and information disappears. Yeah. Instead of embedding it as part of the process of informing. You're, you're right, notification is, is perfect, but not everyone always sees a notification. I mean, I don't see stuff that I wish I had in lots of cases. So I think in the case, though, of the uh, deer wintering yard, H11, Hardwood Trails thing, <coughs> would have helped a lot there would have been if the trails had been sending a representative to Hardwick Electric meetings at least like once a year or so. I think that would have been, then it would have been something that at least you would have had a fair chance of being aware of rather than me showing up at the point where I was like, oh, you know, I want to, we want to do this new trail, so I want to come talk to you. And then. I mean, the, the, the board didn't know about it either in, in any detail before, before it, at, at a point where anything right. could have been done. And that's something that we are addressing, trying to get better um, information flows. Yeah. 
Um, I just wanted to bring up one other thing while we're on communication, and that is the recent um, errors and omissions report that Kaylee referenced that the, our assessor brought to us about, they're listed as parcels, but I believe it's plant, it's like your physical plant, but it's not real estate, I don't think. Correct, one of them is our transmission facilities and one is the distribution facilities. Yeah, so you know, in our communications, it wasn't even clear really what those things were. And I'm just wondering, like I, so Michael happened to be at our select board meeting when it came up and we were all like deer in the headlights because it was a big jump and big value. And we were like, well, I don't know, I don't know if we should be approving <laughs> this. So we didn't that first night. Um, Michael said he would take it back. I also followed up with an email, I think, to Mike and Lynn, just to, as a heads up. But is that, did that communication next day go okay? Well, we went to everyone the next day. Yeah, okay. Then it seems like something, nothing happened for a little bit till recently when I saw yeah. some emails going back and forth. Uh, it's, it's, I, I think the place where the communication broke down was to say, don't do anything at your next meeting either. Oh, yeah, we didn't get that memo. Right, I'm saying that, 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 that because we, we still didn't know what the, what the numbers were. Right. Um, and I don't know, you know, at this point, if there's anything that can be done to say to, I, I don't know if that's been sent on to the, to the state at this point or. Oh, probably. You know, if there's any way to say to the state, hey, hold on a second, we're not sure, we, we're not sure about these because I gather from Mike that they're, um, are issues with the numbers. So if there are issues, I think... Talk to Matt. No. Yeah, talk to Matt. Like, we probably we would want another yeah. errors and yeah. omissions that, yeah. that would come to us. And so... I think video yeah, I think, I think that's exactly what would happen. And I don't think that this is... Um, I really don't think this is a problem. No, I don't um, think I don't think it all. is. Um, okay. Yeah, the whatever I was trying to circle back with your team today to get a whatever the origins are of our existing pilot philosophy plan contract, whatever it is. I don't have that. I can't find that. Um, but there must have been something that where the town and the electric department agreed agreed. Here's what we're going to do for a pilot program instead of. Uh, charging you property yeah. taxes. Well, we can't charge you property taxes because you are us. <laughs> right, <laughs> so we're <laughs> exempt. But right. there was a plan made between yep. the party somewhere that set up this pilot pro uh, It'd be program. interesting to know what that was. And from then until this new document that came out with the new values, none of those values were updated through the years is my oh, understanding really? from the DA. But, what, but, but why is something in the <laughs> property tax based on electric plant and service? It doesn't, I mean, because, right. because the property tax is a tax on real property. It's not a tax on, on but effectively personal Well, that came property. from the but state. That's, yeah, so that's, that's what the state does. The, state the state utility thing. board, or? No, the so legislature the sets the law that does this calculation, the tax department actually runs the calculation and then says, here town of Hardwick, here town of Grassbury, here town of... Exactly. How, does, how, does, how, does the, how do the amounts relate to our plant and service for rate purposes? That's so we give them uh, all our poles, number of customers, uh, miles of this type of construction, that type of construction, and they run a calculation and say, okay, in Hardwick you have this many dollars, and that's the new $4 million number. The last number it was four point two hundred thousand dollars less the year before. It, was less. it looked to oh. me like the number never got updated. No, it didn't. but that would make sense to me if there was an agreement based back in the day on this dollar figure. Oh, a hard number, and it never got of... updated. But, but my my question <clears throat> is, our rates are based on our plant on the value of our plant and service. As, as seen by the Public Utility Commission. Mm -hmm. And if you, I don't remember what, what the number is now. And, I, and as I say, I, I just got it was like from me this morning, so I haven't had The pilot was charging us about sixty-five dollars to $70,000. And under the new equation at today's tax rate would be $165,000. Roughly. But that's but that's something yet to be discussed, right? Understood. That was just right. 
like if you did the same calculation on this new value, this is what it results in. Right. I think we need to dig up that it, there must be a copy of this agreement or some documents that we can find somewhere and resurrect this discussion. And just um, for clarity in terms of like the, the select board taking, like approving those errors and omissions reports, we felt like it was important to do that. Mostly not related to the value, but because through a clerical error in our system, those properties had been changed from exempt to taxable, which affected our grand list. And we needed to get those out of our grand list. And so the um, revised errors and omissions that we voted on, which are not the original ones I sent you, had an additional sentence that said, and change to exempt. And we needed that, and we needed to get that through our process back to the state so the state could calculate the education tax on right. the appropriate grand list. Yeah, that, it was, so it we needed to. It wasn't, that. it wasn't, it wasn't a criticism. I think. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, just saying. Yeah, that's it, was why. A, it was a different driver in the long. Yeah. Yeah, there was two circles there spinning within each other. So we had a discussion that was kind of like, all right, we need to do this. We don't really understand where these values are coming from, but it probably doesn't matter, and we can deal with it later with yeah. our electric. Yeah, it sounds like we can. So exactly it sounds like a next yeah. agenda item or a next meeting item would be the pilot, or at least a smaller meeting to talk about the where history of the pilot and the future of the pilot. Is if there's some way of digging out what the basis was for it in the past, but I would guess we're not bound. No. By, by how it was done in the past at any anyway. No, but sometimes it's nice because if people have documented sure. it, kind of like that um, MOU for the Hardwick Trails, right. like it's nice to be like, oh, look, somebody already thought well, about this. Well, and maybe there's a 10-year renewal on right. it. <laughs> right, right. That's, that's why I was trying to find it, because I was like, well, is there any provision that should right. set us up better than we've yeah. landed? Or? So <clears throat> we recently learned that Alberta Miller has been town clerk for 20 years, and so she may Wowzer. actually, she may, she may know how to put her hands on it. No, never mind, I'm getting, getting that. <laughs> well, well, we have Alberta Miller. She has to do some research, research herself. So yeah. she's researching. She's been right? looking for the, for the origin. Yes. I, I just started looking today, too, because okay. we have oodles of files from Joyce Bellavance days that I'm suspecting there's probably a copy of this thing in her stuff, so. But it's not gonna be a day finding it, it's gonna be right, a couple right. of weeks of digging through yeah. stuff. I wonder if Bill Davies would have a copy. <coughs> Surely he was involved in that discussion. Did, that's a good idea. What about um, the past, uh, we'll call Giuliani. the past managers? Like, oh, we have to figure out where. He's 88. So that'd be, I think that'd be Bill Pickens. I don't know. I wasn't here yet. No. <laughs> For us, it'd be Bon Giovanni or earlier. I Asking Bill Pickens. Pickens. In 87, 88, I think Bill Pickens was the, the manager around, there. Around the time of the merger. I think was, I think was his idea of checking with, with Bill Davies, mm -hmm. and I think Paul Giuliani might. Yeah, actually, yeah. all be a good resource on that, too. Yep. Yeah. So we'll talk to Bill, you talk to Paul. And you guys, you know, <laughs> people will keep digging in their respective offices to try to see if there's any. Yeah, I, I would bet we have one. It's just a matter of finding it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would hope that there was something other than just that simple calculation sheet, which doesn't give you any right. other detail about what's going on. And, yeah. And would that have gone through the town clerk at the town manager's office? Yeah, but it currently goes to the clerk. Clerk, I would say. Pilot payments go through the clerk. Related to taxes. Yeah. Okay. It's a payment in lieu of taxes. Yeah. 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 And all right. other, in the 10 <coughs> other towns, you, HED must pay yeah, tax. Yeah, it does. Yeah, we're not only exempt. It's not pilot, it's tax. Yeah. Yeah. All right, any other communication things? We just briefly touched on the website in terms of agenda, but it came it came up at our last meeting that seeing the minutes would be good, and so we had asked about the, how the website was going and what. Um, right. So minutes are, are one thing, but the uh, we are having our the the local TV channel has initiated getting our stuff on video every month right. now, so that's, that's posted that's by great. them. Yeah. Um, as far as our minutes go on our website, 
we are about, I would guess, at least three weeks away from our new website. And there's a major Joomla security error with our existing website where the developer doesn't even want to touch our website. Um, and we can't put minutes up on that site right now. Um, so I got a note here to, as far as agendas go, to get them to you directly for the interim. But yeah, that'll all be fixed, but it's not ready yet. So it's December? Yeah, hopefully, yeah, hopefully December. And I don't know what Joomla is, but apparently that's some protocol that has to be built into the website to have sufficient security levels because we have customers going in paying their bills and all that kind of stuff in there too. So Yeah, it would be helpful when that's up if we had a link specifically to wherever the minutes and agendas are going to be from our website. So that way if somebody was I think a lot of people go to our website to look at minutes and agendas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If there was a link to your website saying check yeah, out the minutes and yeah. agendas would be a good Oh we do have we do have a link to the ATD website. But like specifically to the page where it's going to be on. I don't know how complicated the website's going to be. No, but he's, this well, that, right. that's something that we can we do on our side. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But we could, yeah. yeah. Well, I can tell you when I tried to find the agenda today, <laughs> I got it's an easy, error message. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. When I tried to get onto the select board section uh -oh. of the hardware huh. website, yeah. Is that still up there? No. <laughs> so website okay. times are tough all yeah. over. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the only other communication thing. Okay. Uh, next is the new energy coordinator and the Hardwick Energy Committee. Do you want me to kick this one off? Just yeah, go ahead. Right. Just an up so Bill Chitsey, we just nominated a couple months ago to be the energy coordinator. He is working on what exactly that's going to mean for the town. And so there was the HART, which Nancy Nonnerman had run for a long time, which was Hardwick Energy. Oh, I had it. Um, but there were various projects that they had helped with in the past. And so he's really trying to look at, um, you know, things like uh, working with Energy Vermont to um, promote Button up, button up, and, and things like that. Energy so, audits, right? On right town properties. Energy audit on town properties, but also on private properties, helping people know where resources yeah. are. So I imagine at some point he'll come to the HED meeting or to the commissioners, <coughs> but it's still like very early on in the process of reforming the. He's group. really trying to recruit people because he right. doesn't want to fly solo. So yeah, if there's not very many anybody involved in is watching thing. and is interested in. Uh, the elect the um, sorry the energy committee. Um, there's a link to Bill Chidsey on our town website, hardwickvt.org, and you should contact him. You could also contact the town manager's office. Mm -hmm. Every second Tuesday. I don't know. Something. I would. <laughs> it's, there's a meeting tonight. Oh, downstairs. I believe. That's it. Yeah, there. Are, are, are these mechanical upgrades? Are they? It's to be determined, I think. Okay, so to be determined, but is the, I be, the interest that he stated as a beginning point would be probably like heating type of Con to controls. Town controls. So, yeah, okay. yeah, like IoT stuff. Like, I don't know. You know, remote. Yeah, I don't know if, it, if yeah, that's. Data logging and controls oh, of, of air handling and heaters. It's not just electricity, it's all, it's right. all fuels. Right. No, and uh, devices, right? You know, it can be anything. Yep. So it's not just going to be insulating or new windows. Or no, no. Bill's a Bill's mechanical contract. No, awesome. Yeah. <coughs> so he's got a lot of energy. Give it to us. But he does need. One. He needs some people to join him. Yeah. So yeah. But yeah, he's, we need some folks. He's just, it, it, determined. Yeah. yeah. It went to great. sleep for quite a while there. It did, because Nancy, Nancy did yeah. a long time. So, and then, yeah, and yeah. It just yeah, Nancy used to be pretty active. It, make, it makes sense to look at the buildings that the town owns. I it mean, does. this building, for starters. Yeah, it's extremely little. energy efficient. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually not that bad for a it's big stone better. building. It it's gotten worked. better. Just don't let it get cold in the yeah. dead of winter, because it takes a long time to bring it back to temperature. Um, uh, all right. So, anything else on the energy coordinator? 
So that's the end of our, our things. Uh, this next is the select board commission, select board and commissioner reports when we said we would do project updates in this section. Anybody have any things to report? Well, I could talk about my little project to, um, to improve the holiday lighting in downtown and um, I'm finishing an application to a winter placemaking grant, a little mini grant for $4,000 to help um, uh, pay for what we've determined we need to, um, in order to wrap the poles, the old style poles, the 15 poles that have banners on them, wrap them with holiday lights. Um, they would need to be, yeah, adapt, have an adapt, an a an way to plug in. Yep. So. Um, we're working on that and hopefully this little grant will pay for that and then we talked about lighting the trees differently or more um, in a more uh, intentional Full. way um, <laughs> than they have been in the past and um, so I think you yeah know, we, we talked about having you know, a day of we were maybe people gonna in the team truck up to help and, do yeah. the trees yeah. but did you get an electrician to look at those poles yes Today, so yesterday. we looked at it so yesterday. yesterday, so we're waiting for that bid, but okay. um, so we're still working on that. But the trees, you know, yeah. Which are we just talking about the trees by the diner parking lot, or? There, those there are four trees, and then there's there's a tree in the uh, by the Peace Park. There's the one by the bridge. We could potentially do you know do those as well, um, but. My little proposal was that we uh, change it up and have like red, green, blue, and gold colors instead of <laughs> just white, and then have just white on the poles. Ah. Um, and then sort of <laughs> have it But this year, you know, if we don't get the grant, or if we do, I mean, we have um, Tom has counted up, done an inventory of the lights that we have now, granted. Those are a combination of cool and warm whites. <laughs> Just saying. So it's different colors. <laughs> I'm a little, you know, I kind of like to have it all be one, but you know, this is what we have. So, um, yeah. And I was just asking Opie before the meeting whether we knew when the guys, when the town crew guys generally do that stuff. And it seems like it's around now. So rather than have them do work that we would rather have done differently, or I would rather have done differently. Um, You're gonna get out of there. Just saying, I'm All just right. putting it out there that, yeah, All I right. don't know. And if you're, if the electric department guys can help us with that, then I'm sure the town crew would love to take that little project off their list of things. I'm looking at OB. He can say anything so, he wants. So what you're saying is you want to have a, a joint holiday lighting party with the Hardwick Electric and some of the town guys. That's you with the use of the bucket yeah. truck so we can get into the higher places and right. put a, a good spin on the lights. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 it's <laughs> not the poles yet. So rather than the like yeah. throwing it up into the branches. Yeah. So Lynn brought this to a, to the board. At our last meeting, it was very well received, and I checked in with Brian about what had been done historically, and he said, "Yeah, the electric department used to help every year do it, and there was uh, kind of a falling out of that uh, activity once the poles got removed that went down Main Street, and just the decorative lighting went in." Hmm. But he said, "You know, it was never a problem, and the, the guys kind of enjoyed well, doing it." Let's so, just revive yeah. that activity. Yeah. Maybe we can play a little music too. <laughs> yeah, while, the, while they're doing it. Well, yeah. I mean, I think that the downtown commission will come up with ideas of having it be more of an event when it when the lights go on or something. But I don't think that's going to happen this year. Yeah, if you could get us a plan, you know, you know, we might be able to save you some money on getting outlets installed if we can just put flying hinges up to stuff, so. It's got outlets up, on the trees, right? It's gonna be up on a pole. We're the only ones with access anyway. So. No, it's the but lights, the, this the light, light yeah. poles, the small light poles. There's the, 15 of them. The sort of. The decorative ones. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah those are a problem. 
shit. <laughs> Well, you gotta. I mean, you can put a, a you can put a socket in those fixtures that has an outlet and receive the ball. So it yeah, might nice be pretty about. simple. That's oh, what you mean up at the top. Had, yeah. That's what we had an electrician oh. do. Yeah. So look that's at what it. It. And we want the outlets the on the top form. so they don't get unplugged. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Or so yeah. people aren't charging their phones in the middle of the sidewalk. Right. Yeah. No free. <laughs> no free phone charging stations. <laughs> you know that. I mean, I would do that. Service that could be provided. Yeah, phone charging. Yeah. <laughs> the phone charging. So OP's going to coordinate some of that. Yeah. And okay. then, yeah. Oh, that's cool. And Mike, you would, uh, you were, one of the two of you guys said that it would probably be important that it be clear that Hardwick Electric crew isn't in charge. Right. You know, it, it's. Why not? We're assistant. Opie o- still, he's not, he's not handing this over. Right. <laughs> the, the, the crew is helping. Sort of reporting for duty for a day of okay. helping. Okay. We can I, certainly because help. Because it I could be a hornet's nest, or, you know? Ah, uh, I'll, yeah, I'll delegate Tom to be in charge. How's that? Oh, <laughs> Sherry wants to be in charge. No. Oh, I, right there. I second it. I, I just wanted to be done right. Okay, well, we'll, we'll <laughs> make sure that it's done right, Jerry. Can you switch the lights? To do it right. to the if you're going to do something right, you know you have to do it yourself. Yeah, I mean, I've always said that. <laughs> I, I, I believe in this uh, team. Okay. That I don't have to. It's a dream team. Yeah. All right, this is great. Any other projects that people are thinking about? Or any other reports that people want to make about anything, really? I think, you know, we are trying to um, improve the situation on the con- in terms of the conservation easement to ease things up, Great. Um, but that's probably going to take some more time. Yeah. I, I can just tell you that the we did uh, re-engage with the um, environmental consultant, and they've identified a couple areas to pr- propose to a and to move things around. Um, and I haven't seen that proposal yet, but I expect to see it literally any day. And so that's the kind of thing from a communication standpoint. That once we get that, yep. that needs to go to, to, everybody. Facility, to everybody um, to make sure that... It wasn't the next that, place you were going to. <laughs> 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 that we don't make things worse instead of making right. things better. Be right in the middle of the trails. Right. Speaking of communications, um, one of, one of the volunteers at the Historical Society asked me today why the electric department does not include a report in the annual town reports anymore. We do. We do. Um, we do. I do. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I didn't Mike know. writes it every year. Every year. Yeah, yeah I hmm, haven't read it closely enough so to remember if it's there or not, but uh, you do. I will tell her that it's there. She just needs to go back and read it. Perfect. Yeah, Alberta. <laughs> That's sends me the, I need that email every year. So. <laughs> that was easy. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> Constituent service. So the so I was in a little discussion with uh, Gary Holloway from the uh, Agency of Commerce and Community Development, and he asked about the EV charger potential in Hardwick. Apparently somebody from the co-op contacted him hoping that they would be able to put an EV charger outside of the new mm. co-op space or something. <laughs> and so co-op. he, yeah, yeah. The Buffalo yeah. Mountain Co-op. And so he, um, he said, mm-hmm. was there anything, yeah, he, I guess they contacted him because he was somehow involved in the state thing that was trying to mm-hmm. Yeah, they had and Hardwick was identified as one of the places where they were going to but we haven't heard anything else from that. Oh yeah, does anybody know? Um, oh, yeah, so that's one question, and the other one was that he um, he said that uh, is it Norwich something or other? Um, one of the developers, yeah. The developer had told had said to him that they were having trouble working with Hardwick Electric because of the exuberant demand charge. 
Exuberant. Um, exuberant. Not everybody has he exuberant said, He churches. used the word exuberant. And I, I, know, I, saw, I, saw, I wrote it down I, because I thought, what the hell does that mean? Anyway, but apparently Greenmount Tower has Norman. waived all demand fees for their project. No, they, they, they still have demand fees, but they have time of use rates. Yeah. And our demand charges don't kick in until you hit uh, 30 kW or more. So, of level, course, I'm not level. understanding any okay. of that. So, if you reach X amount of power needs on a charger, then you would go to a demand rate. But a level 2 charger is only about 7 kW, so you could run four of those before you would have to worry about any demand charges. So, how are we, are, are you working with the, them? The issue that I, I ran into, and I believe it was with Norwich too, um, Norwich and one other developer was trying to identify sites in Hardwick because yeah. there was money available yeah. uh, to, to install these stations. The problem was the areas they targeted, we, we don't have a pole there, we don't have a power line. I mean, you'd have to run secondaries across Main Street, which is not going to happen, over to a pole. Because we tried to suggest places, like at the end of the building where the clip joint is, where there's already Yeah, they the had like three, three areas, and this is quite a while ago, but they had three specific areas that were like their highest profit, whatever, mm -hmm. targeted areas, and we couldn't access them with our stuff. So somebody, they or uh, the property owner or somebody would have to do spend some pretty good money to get facilities in place for us to serve that. So where are we at with having EV chargers in our car? That's the last I've heard about Because they're EV selling chargers. electric cars at the Long Valley, so. I think, and yeah, the, my, my uh, personal bias is that this is where the world's going. It's where it's we heading. We might yeah. as well team up and figure it out. My, 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 my personal bias is that is it's, I think it's something that we need the electric department to be talking about yeah. because if people, they are going in. Like They're the going Center in, just put in a station. <coughs> the uh, Moyle Valley Ford just put in. They're putting they in put more. four huge ones. They already had one, right? Well, we need they had two. Of them. They're putting in four of the the sixty kW units. But, mm -hmm. but those are taking in care private. of people who are working at those locations. No, no, no. no. It's anybody, a car wash. The public. anybody can. An, use anybody can. Use oh, at the yeah, car but wash. Who's yeah, going to walk downtown? Yeah. So can you maybe explain to the board? The, the infrastructure you would need. You, you just said the secondaries, yeah. but explain it in layman's terms, like what the assets that would right. need to so be. So basically the wires that the customer has to put in to connect to our system need to be put in by somebody. We don't own those, those are not, that's the world of electricians. We don't do that work, it's not in our, that's under the National Electric Code. We operate under the National Electric Safety Code, which are two very distinct different areas of the electric industry in the country. So basically, so if I understand, if we were, if the town of Hardwick was to say, we want to put four EV stations in the diner parking lot. As an example, we're going to hire Norwich to do this piece, and then it's going to connect with HED. Is that basically what HED That's needs? That's what it needs to okay. yes. and unless, unless. But what about this consideration of where the lines are? And how right, so are. for example, if Sherry wanted to do something in front of her store, we have no way to access. No, the but like at the end of the, the you know, the, the town right. owns that little shitty parking lot yeah. that is that at the work. end of the, of the clip joint building. That would and work. And that's all. Will the town own the EV charger or, 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 because, I, it, because. I don't know. Or the co-op, say for instance, the yeah, or co at the co-op. So you said that you'd have to, to run a, a prime or secondary under the road or above the road. Yeah, I don't know how. You so would. Do you don't have the infrastructure. The hardware collection doesn't have the infrastructure there right now to be able to support charging stations. Not on Main Street there. No. Right. So I think that's what we need to look at as a group where are the places? of where we can do it. Yeah. Where and is it and what's what's and feasible we, and, and what's not feasible. And we did look so. a couple of years ago we did look because I thought there was discussion about the parking lot by the village by the you know village restaurant but yeah. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. that of putting something yeah. in there. I think there was some discussion about in parking lot at where Tops and, and Walgreens yes. are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, but I think there's also a question, at, in, in my mind at least, who's going to own these things? Are these going to be for-profit right. yeah. right. chargers right. where the prices are going to be higher mm -hmm. um, than if it's something that, well, the, yeah. that the electric department 
does and, and, and maintains, or that the town does and mm -hmm. maintains. Mm -hmm. um, you so, know, I mean, it could be a source of revenue for the town. So maybe what the town right. could do is ask that question of ourselves, and maybe what HED could do, because I, th I do think that this is coming, and that yeah. like, Definitely. we've been, yeah, we've all been gone. thinking about it for a long time, and we're kind of and with the F-150 coming out, <laughs> so it's like, yeah, yeah. we got to do it. So if, if because we have all those, we have great maps of downtown, if we, if we because you know this information, Mike, if you were able to just circle, here are areas where it's actually feasible, yeah. and then we were to talk about, okay, who's going to fund, like, are these going to be public, who's going to fund it, where's the money going to come from? And that seems like more of a town. I think it, it would be easier to do in a collaborative setting. I totally agree. looked at the map sure. and said, these are places where we think that it makes sense for the town, and then, yeah. Mike, what's the scene for infrastructure there? So is the, that, yeah. is that easy or is that hard? The talking about is where the mural is, right? No, no that oh. actual yeah. across okay. the road. Um, it's where the cliff joint Where, where, where the, the village park is. Oh, no, is. yeah. Okay. She's Sherry's talking about so at the end of South Main Street where it turns turn. to Mill Street, oh, right, right by Tracy's Clip. Oh, 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 oh that, okay. Right right where that over. tiny little, yep. very unorganized parking area is where my great grand great aunt had her drugstore that burned down in the eighties. So there's that, <laughs> and there's all that power and everything on the side of that building. It just yeah. seems like it yeah, we could lends that. itself to yeah. But the co-op is also looking at buying yes. the village market and there's parking in yes. front of there. Yeah. And there's, I would think there's got to be some infrastructure. Oh, that's right could, there. That yeah. would be a good spot. Because, yeah, but that would also the, be a good the spot. The parking lot with the mural is all set up too. That's right? also a good spot. Right. That would be good. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. That's yeah. a lot of good spots. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, so we don't have to run any new secondaries or anything? The secondaries are already there. Okay. The, the, one, the, one, the one, I think, I think we, sh you know, we should be identifying places. Yeah. <clears throat> and and it, it's not just places, but it's also what kind of chargers. Are, right, you know, are, are they, you know, because there are three levels yeah. of, of chargers. Well, you guys would know best. Uh, well, it, dep it, it depends what people are willing to, to pay and, um, and how fast, what people are going to be using the chargers for. Because uh, I mean, I don't think tier one charges probably. No, they're sense. a waste of time. But but the twos and the threes, uh, you know, it depends on the battery size, how much of it, how long it takes to get how much charge. But so, so I, but we're I, so we're all set up in our parking lot to sit to install a tier two charger. I had all that electrical well, work done. Well, those are the ones that the state is trying to put out. No, are, are, are these chargers that are, oh, already have a payment system? Uh, we, they do have a swipe system, but we, my plan was to put one in as a pilot to see if it was even a good location and just let uh, customers come in and show us a copy of their bill or give us their account number and let them have a free charge and just see how it went. Um, that was put on hold because of COVID because we have a new retaining wall project going on out there, which is actually going to start next week, finally. So we didn't put the charger in so that we could tear it out and redo the wall and then put it all back in. So it's been waiting. Okay, and and what, about, what about seeing how it would work? Would, is, what kind of information were you trying to get? Just whether people were going to use it? Yeah, whether, people, whether it was a good block to put more in or if people were going to use right. it at all. And the reason I, I was up at uh, evaluating position is one of our sister municipals uh, Swanton Village, they they are right on a major uh, intersection with a couple state highways and the Interstate 89, and they have a massive uh, park and ride there right at the interstate. And early on, probably three years ago, they had I think six or eight stations installed there with the swipe systems and everything. And uh, to this day, they pay more in credit card fees for those services than they get in revenue from all those stations. Yeah, uh, they were, they were uh, three years ago, there were yeah. no, there were very few electric cars. Understood. Uh, and that's yeah. going to, that's going to change. But, but the other point that I was going to make, I think identifying so that we're ready to move when, when we can't, there's going to be money coming with um, the infrastructure bill. And I don't know who's going to be eligible for it, uh, but we need to—we really need to look into that because mm -hmm. we don't want to be paying for things that we don't need to be paying for if we can be getting grant money. 
whether it's, you know, whoever that grant money is going through. So we just need to be mindful of that. So, Mike, the, the meeting in December, uh, is there an agenda yet? This is a, it was a legislative or meeting you were talking about. I, I can't remember with whom it was, but. Uh, well, there are local legislators. Legislators, yeah. okay, so basically to inform them or convince them of the necessity of certain things to be able to advocate for funding. Well, it's to share anything and everything. Anything and everything, okay. Cargo Electric with our local logistics okay. legislators, yeah. With VEPSA and Lindenville Electric, because we share a lot of local legislators. Which, what, that's the, what's the date of that meeting? That is the December. third Monday in December, whatever date that is. So, and, and the, the grant money, uh, I mean, they're, they're for specific products have to be submitted for the grant grants, correct? That meeting isn't about any specific grant. And, right, no, I, but I'm just I saying, I'm just what, saying the money that's going to be coming through, so. I have no idea. Yeah, okay. depend, yeah, we don't know yet. Okay. I mean, like the ARPA money, for example, we just, the town it's got 20? a chunk of money. Mm, just a block, so. block, block. Just a block of money. Six or a block oh, so it's not a regular time. We could spend it on. No. But okay. I'll forward it to you. Oh, okay, thanks. No junk, it's Let me. To all of you or just you? All no, of you. send it to everybody. Send it to me too. Don't yeah. forget me. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, yeah, I love that. So, what? Um, what's a follow up on? So, I just want to be clear. That's not a. It's, it's a, a hard electric. Yeah, it's a hard electric with meeting with about our, power business. Yep. yep. So don't come to the meeting. No, you can come. Asking for money from them. Right. That's <laughs> not what it's about. Money's for you. No, it is. It is no, it's not that. informational. It's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more. Uh, you we'll know, be quiet. We're we're looking for support to uh, get. M so automated metering infrastructure. Yep is a huge issue for us. It's coming. It's, we have to have it to have time of use rates here. Talking about. It's and it's going to be a 1.1 to 1.2 million dollar investment. So right now in the state, several utilities have it. Um, and the only reason they got it was because the feds gave them 65% of the cost to do it. Otherwise, it's not, uh, the, the model does not pay for itself. So we've been pushing our legislators to say, hey, we, we'll do it too. Give us some similar deal. So those are the kind of things we want to talk about. And, I mean, it, it would allow for demand side control too, which, you know, could work for peach caving. The time of use rates will. Time yeah. use, and uh, once storage builds out with, with vehicles, you know, those can be used as storage because of the, the meter controls. I mean, it takes additional controls, but it just allows a much more modulated can allow for a much more modulated uh, energy demand. Just bringing that, the peak demand down. I mean, does that sound correct, Mike? You could play all kinds of games <laughs> with stored, stored energy, yes. And the legislature, or the state anyway, is sitting on a fair amount still yes. of, uh, those of the recovery money. Yes, trying to talk to them about. Yeah, yeah. and they're trying to figure out how to spend it. it. I mean, the new Ford, for example, the truck Ford truck that's coming out is uh, 120 kilowatt hours. That can be, you know, obviously yeah. it needs to be integrated, but you know that can be a a, a, um, a production resource too. You know, it, that or storage for, for storage, yeah. But you know, like, uh, yeah. Anyway, it's it's a lot of things. Where would you store? So, um, just to get started. I want to recap on the EV energy. Okay? No, first yeah, let me just do something sure, first. Sure, sure. <laughs> so uh, can can we say that? Opie and Mike are going to do this thing about find about finding those identifying those spots that we just talked about. Sure, that we do that. That would work. Sure, and would be <coughs> yeah. Okay, that'd be great. Turn around. Sorry, yeah, you can go. No, it just seems like the only other piece of that puzzle is figuring out who's going to own them and who will whether that's a third party HED or. Yeah, so I think, arrangement. I think going back to what Lynn said, um, we ought to look at what funding is out there and how that can work. Because you know, if it's if there's funding that could come to a municipality, right. and it looks better if the if the municipality does it, then we can work together that way. Yep. There's a lot of this funding that's coming recently. 
could come to the municipality and we can pass it on. So that's yeah. possible too. But yeah, no, there's, there's all kinds of possibilities and, and it may be that if it, the funding is for private funding, but then maybe that means that in, in that there's some negotiation <coughs> under the contracts with whoever's doing it to make sure that the rates that they're charging are going to be within a certain range mm -hmm. so that um, Hardwick doesn't become the uh, most expensive place to in the state to, car, to charge right, a car. Right, right. Because you don't want that. I'm sorry? Don't want that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but and the other thing is, I mean, yeah, I guess I'm personally leery about huge investment right now because we don't really know what the use patterns are going to be. Right. And um, like Mike's pointing out, like a park and ride by 89 maybe wasn't the best choice three years ago, but maybe now, today, in downtown Hardwick, maybe that's good because maybe yeah. somebody's going to park there and go to the diner while their car charges or they're going to go to Positive really, Pie or whatever. Be downtown. I just don't, I, yeah, my concern a little bit is that being up here at HED doesn't necessarily bring them right. down, but we're yeah. going to do all we can to bring them down from the trail, so yeah. maybe it's right on the trail. Right. Well, that's, that was part of the, one of the last meetings I had with the team from uh, V-Trans on the rail bed mm -hmm. <coughs> was uh, I was trying to get them to let us use a little more of the right-of-way and was promoting us having a potential charging station there for people who are using the trail and they were very excited about that. And so and yeah. parking. Yeah. And there's a parking lot. I said there's a parking lot here that's and empty every weekend. Parking. Exactly. So, Which mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Hey yeah. just had yeah. advertising yeah. right at the yeah. chargers yeah. for town <laughs> businesses. Yeah. I think so you know, the beauty of us being involved with the charger is be fully regulated under the PUC. It would only be for uh, recovering our costs. There's no profit in it for us. Um, so as far as the consumer goes, we would be the best one to be yeah. driving that train. You wouldn't have the demand charge? Uh, after we go to time of use rates, you can charge at different times and pay different rates during the day. So if it was during peak hours, say 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock in the morning, you're going to pay top dollar. If you're doing it seven o'clock to nine o'clock at night, you're gonna pay a lot less. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. That's how it works. Yeah. It All right. Right. Yeah. Sherry's got another meeting. I, I have to be at that meeting too. Huh? Yeah. I have to be at that meeting too. <coughs> All right. This is exciting. That's a good note to end. But yeah, it is. Yeah. Lots of interesting. Yeah. It's Lots of interesting stuff. So the town like doesn't the own the lot where the <laughs> mural is. Yes, the town does. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's a town. So that's another. A that's a perfect parking. spot. Perfect. Yeah. There are lots. Does of that provide enough space from the retaining wall? In I put the charger right on the retaining wall. Okay. So a car could pull up tight. Pull right up tight. Nice. Yeah. Just above the plow line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be preferred. Yes, that's, 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 no, you're right. All right. Uh, Motion to adjourn. Yes. <laughs> All in favor? Aye, aye, aye. Aye, aye, aye. aye. We're adjourning. Thank you, everyone. This is uh, productive. Oh, uh, I know we just adjourned, but we need to, uh, what's our next, when are we going to reconvene? Is it going to be in May again? Yeah. Why don't we do them every four months? Yeah. Instead of every quarterly. six months. Or quarterly. Or quarterly. Or quarterly. I was trying to get a little ease into it. Quarterly. Yeah. 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 That, that, that would help with transition. Communication. Yes, that's, that's exactly what. Yeah. So February. So when's the next one? I'm sure it will be. Uh, <laughs> it's due next week. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, when I do it when the water and sewer bill is due? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going on uh, having an audience. Just saying. No. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, kind of it's, it's kind of a joke. Oh. No, I just didn't hear what you said. <laughs> didn't go anywhere. Uh, <laughs> they're meeting downstairs. Oh, they're meeting downstairs. So, right now. Uh, so we're looking <laughs> February? Yeah. Oh, and, and what's his name? Bill. Something. Ch Chitsy. Ch it's a family name. Chitsy. Something. Thank you. <laughs> Hey, I'm looking at your day it is. There we are. February. No Z. No Z. Today's the 9th. 8th could work. That'd be...
that'd be a Tuesday. That'd be very much like three months ahead, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's February, 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 February the eighth. That's terrifying. That's only three months away. February. Be there, be square. All right. Thank you, everyone. February. February and three.